This is CX of M Radio, the voice of customer experience professionals. Welcome to the Delighted Customers Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Slayton, and I'm so glad you're here. I talk to guests with a wide range of expertise who share meaningful insights and wisdom. We give you practical tips, proven frameworks, and share ways to help you delight your customers. My guest on today's show is Risa Lovell from Farm Credit Insurance in Michigan. We met at the CXM 360 conference at Michigan State University, where Risa was about to present on a CX award she had won for some outstanding work she had done in customer experience at her organization. And in particular, she had this vision for how to break down silos in her organization to deliver better experiences for her customers. She does a great job of telling the story and um, and some great ideas uh, that I think you can use wherever you are to improve and delight the customer's experience. Well, I am so excited to have my guest on the show, Risa Level from Farm Bureau Insurance of Michigan. And we are, we are broadcasting today from Michigan State University in East Lansing. And we are at the CXM 360 conference. And I caught her because I was, I happened to be fortunate enough to be a judge and got to see her submission, which ended up winning an award for CX. And she's going to talk about a little bit about her background and who, who, who she is and how she came into the world of CX, but also tell us a little bit about an award-winning effort that she did at Farm Bureau. Mm -hmm. So first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you, Mark. I'm excited to be here. Yes, yes. And um, she is also about to share a story and present to a group. So I'm just honored to have grabbed her before she did that. So tell us a little bit about how you got into the world of customer experience. Sure. So I think customer experience for me started um, when I was 15 in my first job at Kentucky Fried Chicken. Wow. Um, I, I've always worked in um, a service-based industry. Um, I've worked a lot in finance. Um, so I've worked for organizations, large organizations like the Third Bank, um, Farmers Insurance, um, now Farm Bureau. I did a little stint um, in travel. I worked for booking.com. Um, but in all of my my career, it was service focused, a lot of contact center. And um, so I've done everything you can imagine in a contact center from running um, training, quality assurance, workforce management, learning and development, answering the phones, supervision, uh, manager, and, and now I'm a director. So yeah, I've, I've run the gamut. You have, <laughs> um, you sure have. And obviously you, you love it. I do. Um, and tell us about, um, tell us a little bit about Farm Bureau. Sure. So Farm Bureau Insurance of Michigan, um, we're a one state multi-line writer. So we write um, auto, home, commercial, farm, health, life, um, you name it. Um, but Farm Bureau itself is a very unique organization because we do have Farm Bureaus throughout the country. Um, the insurance companies are not affiliated. Um, and because we don't compete, we can actually work together to share best practices. Um, and we have very similar customer bases. Um, and it's, it's a fantastic opportunity to have that connection, which is very unique. Um, and then Farm Bureau, we're owned by Michigan Farm Bureau which is actually an organization that is committed to the um, promotion and advancement of the agriculture industry. Um, they're a nonprofit. Hmm. And that's really where the insurance company came to be because farmers couldn't get the appropriate coverage that they needed hmm. um, for their crops and such. And so they created their own insurance company. And so we have this beautiful partnership and now we help to finance a lot of their initiatives um, and really move agriculture forward. Nice, nice. Interesting background, interesting story. Yeah. Um, probably a mission, a sense of mission there. Absolutely. Yeah. Huge sense of purpose. Um, and like our building is here in Lansing, our corporate building, um, and it houses the insurance company as well as Michigan Farm Bureau. Um, and we just underwent an amazing renovation. But um, 
just that sense of pride. And we, we have um, memorabilia all around the building, pictures of our actual insureds and our members and our farmers um, and a really cool history of where we come from. Um, we have a, a new for purpose, we call it. Um, our purpose really is to end childhood hunger in the state wow. of Michigan. Wow. Um, so on top of the agriculture piece, um, our company, our employees can really get behind that effort. We have a lot of opportunity to volunteer um, and, and really help the, the children of Michigan and try to solve that um, wicked problem, if mm. you will. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it interests me that you, of all the things you chose, you chose it. So like, yep. is tell us about like, how big is this, is this an issue in Michigan and how big of is a childhood? Um, it is. It, I guess it's an issue everywhere yeah, sure, really sure um but in michigan absolutely especially after the pandemic um children who are in rural areas um at school for example that might be their only opportunity to get a nutritious meal um and so when children went home during the pandemic that that was a problem and it was kind of an all hands on deck figuring out how are we going to get nutritious food to these kids and their families um in our urban areas um there's definitely a need um, because of, you know, poverty. And and so we're trying to help solve the problem through, you know, volunteering and, and donating money and donating meals. Um, but I think there's an opportunity as well to look at that a little more systematically and understand what is the root cause. Um, yeah. So our organization is just starting to play a large role. That is awesome. In that problem. That's yeah. really important work. Um, so we're, we're talking about um, your brand mm -hmm. and... Um, I, I guess I'd like to, the first question that comes to mind is, um, there are a lot of insurance organizations out there. There's a lot of people sell insurance. And by the way, it's B2C and B2B, right? Correct. Okay. So, so what, what differentiates your brand? I think what differentiates our brand is our commitment to community. So hmm. um, if you live in the state of Michigan and you've ever seen one of our commercials, um, our campaign right now is The Experience Matters and that we are a Michigan-based insurance company. Mm -hmm. So we know our insurance because we live here. I am a client of Farm Bureau Insurance. So mm -hmm. it's been interesting when I look at um, a customer journey, for example, I can look at that from my perspective. My parents are clients of Farm Bureau Insurance. Um, we really are Michigan's insurance company. And so I think that's what's special about us. We live here, we're part of our communities. Um, we operate under an exclusive agent model, a captive agent model. So you can only buy our insurance through one of our insurance agents who are, uh, we call them trusted advisors. Okay. And that's really the value proposition for us is they help make sure that you are adequately protected. Um, people could go to um, a website of a top national carrier and choose state minimums, right? But does a customer really understand what that means? Like, sure, your premiums are lower, but in that time of need, when you actually have a claim and mm. you're not adequately covered, um, we really want to be the ones that at least raise that red flag and help you understand the choices that you're making. Because let's be real, insurance is um, really confusing and it's not mm. something that people are genuinely passionate about. Right. It's a, I hate to use this term, but I call it a necessary evil. Yeah, like you have to have that. it by law, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so we want to make that experience the best for you and as painless as possible or help you understand what you're buying. Yeah. So you you got there about five years ago. I, I, I did. Yep. And five I, years in December. In December. And so what what I um what I'm wondering about is since you've been there, like what work needed to be done from a CX st standpoint in the organization? And what have you done so far? Absolutely. Um so what drew me to the company was that com that um Community presence. My mom and dad were clients at the time. I wasn't. And they'd raved about their agent and just the, the sense of community. And so I I was traveling a lot for my job at the time with Bookie. Um, I applied and, and I was fortunate enough and I actually started in the marketing department. Um, and I worked with our new agents. So I was I managed the staff that helped them build their book of business and get started. And just with my vast background in, in contact centers and customer experience, I just kind of started watching, watching the processes and, and trying to understand um, where were our gaps. And the very first thing that I noticed uh, for a gap for um, Farm Bureau was 
we only did business during like traditional business hours. Hmm. So after 4.30 or I'd say five o'clock, if your agent chose to be open that late, there wasn't anybody that you could call unless you had a claim. Of course, first notice of loss has always been there. But if you needed to change red car to blue car or you had a question about your invoice, there wasn't anybody there to help you mm. unless you could personally reach out to your agent. Mm. And so that's really where my customer experience journey started with Farm Bureau. Okay. And so how is that about? Sure. So because of my background, um, we had a new vice president of marketing and he actually came from a field leadership role. So he used to be an agent, worked his way up and he saw the same opportunity that I did. And so we got to talking and he was like, you know, you have a contact center background. Um, what are your thoughts on starting a contact center where we service customers directly as an extension of the agent's office? So like from 4.30 to 9 p.m., Monday through Friday, 9 to 1, um, we're available. The agents forward their phones to us and then we can just help their customers like seamlessly. They almost don't even know that we're not in the agent's office. And I'm like, that's that's a great idea. I definitely saw the need for it. And I was like, yeah, I can help with that. And he's like, well, do you think we could do it like in two weeks? Like we could just spin that up, right? Hmm, right. Sure. Like let's do it, right? So I, I jumped in um, head first. Honestly, we didn't have a budget. We weren't sure where it was going. Sure. Um, so we we started building this team. I, I was able to hire one employee. Okay. And we started slow. So we have um, approximately 400 agents in the state of Michigan. So we started with a very small subset okay. so that I could scale and make sure they liked it. Um, and actually it went really well. They loved it. And we mm. don't, we don't charge for the service. So that made it even better because we want agents to use it. We want to be good for our customers. At the end of the day, that's what it's about being available for them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, over time, um, we grew all of a sudden I was able to hire a supervisor and like that team still exists today. Um, they're about 16 strong. Um, wow. And yeah, so that was the start of expanding the customer experience at Farm Bureau was just expanding the availability and the hours. And we have drastically evolved from there from 2019 to now. And you mentioned that the agents really like it. Um, have you have you a way of figuring out or a way of describing the success in terms of the customers? You know, in re reaction to the oh, absolutely. People? Um, so customers give us feedback and their agents feedback regularly. Like, hey, at seven o'clock last night, I had a question about my bill, and I was able to call someone and, and get an answer. Um. I didn't have to sleep on that. We were able to take that anxiety, take that weight off of them. Um, over time, we have expanded our services. Um, uh, maybe a year after we started the after hour service, we finally rolled all of the agents in. And now we offer live, live chat on the website. Um, that was kind of another just listening to customers' feedback and me looking at customer service holistically for the organization it was a gap that I saw and it was something that I was able to, um, we were almost like a little innovation cell, if hmm. you will. We were, yeah. we were kind of in this little bubble. It was like, okay, you three, like figure this problem out. And so we did it and we found a vendor and, and it was really kind of inexpensive and met all of our needs and, and we fired it up. And then we were able to get all of this amazing data because this was the first time we were able to survey our customers. Mm -hmm. um, claims did some surveying, but no one from like a, a customer experience yeah. perspective outside of claims. Right. So um, in our live chat, there's a little survey at the end and we can get a thumbs up or a thumbs down and some verbatims. And so then we really started understanding like, oh, okay, what are our customers need? Do they like this? Do they not like this? And we found that there was a need for service even beyond mm -hmm. those hours. Mm -hmm. And then we started playing with the, the vendor um, that we partnered with their their software and found hey we can build chatbots wow okay this might be something right so we we literally just built our own chatbots like just playing around and, yeah. and we built a we called it a daytime bot her name is jane so when you go to our website you actually chat with like jane the virtual assistant and she can route you so there's some things that she's intelligent about and she can help you with and then some things you might need to actually talk to a human being. Mm -hmm. um, after traditional business hours, we had, it was called John Bot, um, but he could answer some basic questions. And I really, I, I could see that take some of that worry and anxiety 
out of our our customers' days because they could at least get some answers um, 24-7, 365 days a year, which was never available before 2019. Yeah. So do you track things like, um, the, you know, the volume of, of, of active, of the engagement that customers have on the chat or like in purse, obviously well, live calls you're tracking, but. Oh yeah. We yeah. track everything. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's amazing. We can even see like who's cruising our website. We can proactively reach out to customers. Um, if they've been on a, a particular page for a certain amount of time, we could say like, um, Hey, Mr. or Mrs. You know, uh, are you having any issues or is there anything that I can help you with? Um, yeah, we definitely have a lot more insight into where our customers are. What are they doing? Where do they want to be? Um, because I think we know that sometimes the feedback that, that they provide, um, sometimes customers don't understand what it is that they need. Mm-hmm. So we're able to put the story together. Yeah. It, it's interesting you say that. I did um, just an f- informal poll on LinkedIn um, <laughs> and talked about from an insurance standpoint, what are some things, and this should apply to other industries as well, sure. but from a service standpoint, what are some things that bother you the most? I mean, I think I had not being notified about a price increase or rate rate increase. Um, I had um, chatbots. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, in general, chatbots. I had not being able to speak to a live agent or person on the other side of the phone. And that was the one that won by like 20 points is, Mm -hmm. you know, so people as one of the channels, there are a large number, not every, but a large, large number of people that still like that live voice. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And um, being a Michigan based insurance company and very much involved in community, I'm sure you can imagine we have um, a subset of customers who want to do business with us digitally. So we have a strong subset of customers who I want a piece of paper in my hand because I only pay my bill on the 15th of the month. And so I want it at this specific time so that I can I can meet that. And when I call, I want to talk to you or I want to go into my agent's office and I want to chat with you for a half hour and have a cup of coffee because they really appreciate that relationship. Um, on one hand, I understand you can't be everything to everyone, um, but we are definitely trying to be good. Um, for our entire customer base um, and, and really design our processes to meet their needs. So today, if you call Farm Bureau Insurance, we do have an IBR. I think it's relatively comprehensive. Um, but if you're just really frustrated and you push zero, you're going to get an operator. Okay. And we actually have a person who will help you out and, and route you where you need to go. Um, we have a lot of data around that too. So we understand who uses that and why. Um, because we don't want to do a disservice to our customers. But at the same time, in this economy, we're trying to balance efficiency. Mm. So you only have so many uh, people. And, you know, we all have competing priorities and budgets. Right. right. So we want to be everything to everyone, but but you can't in reality. So yeah. there's always a balance. Yeah, always a balance. So I want to um, talk a little bit about what... what um, originated the idea for this thing that ended up being an award, an award for you folks. Sure. Before you do that, I want to just let the audience know that you're part of a program that okay. is an inaugural program, a charter program at, here at Michigan State University. It's a master's of science in customer experience management. Um, and you're one of the master's students right now, right? I am. I am in the inaugural class. Yes. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, Kind of briefly, but I do, I would love to hear what made you decide to enroll in the program. Absolutely. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, I've worked in so many different facets of customer experience. Yeah. And I have a vision and I I understand where I want to go, but sometimes there's not like a good structure Mm -hmm. and um, it can be difficult to put the pieces together. And kind of get that vision out of your mind and um, share it, plus get people on board and excited and want to go there with you. So when I, I found out about this degree a few years ago, actually, and I've been, I've been watching uh, and waiting for it to come to fruition, because for me, what it meant was I was going to actually learn how to make this, uh, make customer experience a formal discipline and actually have like s- some structure and some format and some tools um, that I could use to put those pieces together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, awesome. Thank you. Congratulations on being the first group. So you Thank won you. this award. I did. And tell us about what 
the reason for, you know, what was the problem you were trying to solve? How did you approach it? And, you know, the de to degree to which it was a success. Sure. So I'll build on my, I guess, my experience in marketing. So in marketing, we created after hour service, we created live chat, um, but we weren't part of the customer service department. There was a separate customer service department and their primary function was billing, billing right. support, um, where my team really helped with like policy services. Again, you need to make a change. You want to change your deductible, change red car to blue car. We could help with that. Um, so there was definitely a gap and we were getting feedback from our customers um, that their experience was disconnected. So I have to call my agent for this. I call you for that. I call customer service for questions about my bill. Um, and so honestly, to like about that time, I started planning like, okay, so if I was queen for a day, what would I do? What would a service model look like for a farm bureau? And um I had a, a pretty strong plan in place and just, I kind of sat on it. Like I, I talked with my leadership about it, but again, I wasn't the customer service department. So there was only so far that, that we could go without stepping on toes, um, I suppose. And the opportunity finally presented itself because the director of customer service decided to retire. Mm. So I packed up my plan and I applied. Um, and uh, apparently the leadership team liked what I had to say because I stepped into this position about a year and a half ago, but that's when the real work began. <laughs> so uh, as part of stepping into this position, I negotiated